Hey, what's up, Leron here. In today's video, you're gonna learn how to paint a wave in watercolor with emphasis on problem solving. This is a very important topic. You're gonna run into many problems. I'm gonna show you how to solve a lot of them. So first I'm pre-wetting both sides of the paper because I want it to stay wet for much longer than usual so that I can do some controlled wet and wet. Uh, here is our reference photo, beautiful wave, and my sketch. I'm gonna put a link below if you wanna draw it based on my sketch. To the bottom right corner, you see I basically divided the scene into light and dark uh, and everything that's white is something I'm going to try and mostly skip in this wash. So you can treat this first wash as if I'm painting everything that is in the dark, which is very interesting. It's a concept I've shown in a previous video in the past of how to treat the different layers, uh, but I just wanted to show a bit of that here. So you'll notice how I'm painting around that foam here. Now my paper is at an angle to help me, but to be honest with you, it probably shouldn't have been because now the paint seeps down. But doesn't matter because we're going to do some lifting to really bring back some of those uh, lost ripples and I'm going to show you how to solve that problem later on. Uh, but in any case, wet and wet, I wanted a strong, dark, muted yellow there in the background, spraying some water to keep it wet for longer. And we're onto that wave, the actual green, lush, beautiful part of the water. Uh, that's one of my favorite parts of this scene. Uh, and I have received some comments that I used very unique colors. I actually didn't use too much of a unique color combination here. It's pretty much lemon yellow, phthalo blue, but I'm pretty much following what I see in the reference photo, right? So you see a bit of a green to the left, a bit of a blue even, and then where the wave kind of starts to break, you get a bit of a yellow reflection there. Now I'm using a dry brush, as dry as I can, to lift back some of these ripples. This won't be enough, so you'll see me adding a lot of gouache later, but that's all fun, that's part of the process. Um, so you see I'm painting, just as I told you, most of the parts that were in black earlier, that's my first wash that I'm doing wet and wet. Now, if you're scared of wet and wet, I get it, it's not the easiest thing to master, but pay attention to what I did in the beginning. I pre-wet both sides of paper. Look at how much time this gives me. I'm one of those people who watch tutorials when I got started with watercolor and wonder how the heck the paper stays wet for so long. Well, it's not magic. Um, there are ways to do that and this is one of them that I utilized here. So now I'm painting a bit of that blue that you see in the gaps between the foam and the beautiful uh, white kind of splashes of water. Uh, and again, the goal here is just to get an underpainting that is clean enough and clear enough for me to work on in the next stage. This isn't meant to be like a finishing uh, wash or anything like that, just setting the tone. Look at how pretty this old ride. Now I'm starting with that very top part of the painting. And to be honest with you, this section of the page I'm really simplifying. So you'll see me uh, mixing and merging and, and approaching it quite impressionistically. So it's one of those things where you squint your eyes a bit. You look at the overall impression. By the way, look at how long I'm, I'm mixing, okay? I wanted to show you some of that sped up just so that you understand everything here is planned like the mixes it's not like i can mix whatever i want in 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 a second and very easily no it actually takes some effort okay so just so you know take your time i'm not a magician you're not a magician too probably you need to take time and mix the accurate paint and the accurate paint could be the accurate paint you have in mind not necessarily the paint you see in the scene okay now moving on with this uh, I'm negatively painting around, I'm, I'm painting all the way to those blue ripples and to the white foam and to the bottom there where the wave breaks and I'm moving left. And to the left you'll see it's a bit more of a green and orange combination. So I'm working my way around, it's very muted green. One of my favorite actually combinations uh, to get a nice rich green that has a lot of depth and character to it. Now I'm gonna backtrack a little, talk about my materials. I'm using cold press paper. Okay, so this is cold press paper. Uh, it is um, Saunders Waterford. My brush is in a Skoda. This one's actually a, one I've started using more recently. Uh, and I'm, I'm gonna check exactly what it is. It's either the Barocco or the Ultimo. I don't remember. Uh, size 16, the Ultimo. Uh, we'll have to see if it's blue or green, but both can be used in this instance. Yeah, it's the Barocco. It's my usual one, actually. Um, and the colors, okay? So Thalo Blue, Lemon Yellow, and 
uh, quinacridone rose in some spots i'm including just a bit of pyrrole scarlet where you really need that fiery red but for the most part it's none of that it's just the three that i mentioned maybe a bit of neutral tint here and there but look at how i'm making my way carefully around those ripples now remember you have a wash that needs to you need to keep painting before it dries before the edge dries so you see me finding my happy medium between speed and um, and accuracy. Now you'll notice I'm separating the painting in two here. So I'm working my way very carefully and then I kind of stop where the foam is uh, and I'm gonna incorporate a bit of blue there but for the most part that's gonna be like the top almost half of the painting and everything under those ripples is the bottom half. So you need to, uh, when you look at the scene, figure out where's your, and there's a concept I like to call stop lines. So when you do a wash, especially a large one like this, you really wanna ask yourself, where's my stop line? I'm painting from here down to where? You need to know that before you start the wash so that you're prepared. Okay, and I'm done with that wash in the background. Right now what I'm doing is starting to indicate some of the waves and ripples you see more in the foreground. Um, so it's one of those things you want to be aware of uh, because if you don't have a good plan, it's just gonna make things a little harder. So at the very least, know the area you're gonna paint. Even if um, you're, you, you don't know exactly the colors or the values, one thing you do want to be uh, pretty much s s certain of is the area. Same goes for this area, right? I'm, placing that blue because you see there's a bit of a pocket there within all the highlights where you see a bit of the blue, you see a bit of the green, um, and it's a very abstract pattern, so I'm just kind of making my way around it. Now, it doesn't really matter exactly how you paint it. What matters to me is that it will be clear that among all of these white highlights, there are some... Um, there is some depth and richness of blues and greens and browns uh, right underneath the foam. Okay, so you see now I'm working a little slower because I was able to work on small individual shapes. Now where I'll have to pick up the pace is this section because we're going to paint this whole thing in one go. Now looking back at this, I did make a few mistakes, but that's fine. Could have probably uh, simplified this into two washes and had a much easier life, to be honest with you. Could have pre-wet in some areas instead of painting uh, wet on dry, which made things a little harder. Uh, but overall, I'm forgiving myself because I do really like the result. Uh, so you see me following that slightly darker wash among, within the wave, right? Um, and I'm just ignoring the lightest bits um, and I'm moving on with the inside of that wave onto where it goes and breaks, like, you know, the, the hill of it. Um, and this is where I see a bit of yellow. So the way I do this is I know I'm going to put a darker wash later on. So for now, I'm just establishing the general shapes of that yellow and green. Okay. I'm not trying to already paint the finalized shape. Uh, this is something I know I'll have to add on to uh, another layer because doing this in one go is possible, but it's very hard. So notice a couple of separations we talked about. You want to separate your shapes and figure out, okay, this shape goes from here to there. That gives you confidence because you know what you're dealing with, especially in large washes. And then we talk about separation of layers, right? Don't try to bite off more than you can chew, right? That's Is that how the saying goes? Don't do that because uh, it will make it just a lot harder. Uh, so work in small areas. The tricky thing about these kinds of scenes is that sometimes it's very hard to tell where those areas are because it's such a um, such a organic, natural type of view that it can really play games with you and, and make you uncertain. Okay, where can I stop? Where can I continue? Don't let that fool you. Every scene is a collection of shapes. Find those shapes and you're good, okay? Find those shapes and you'll be all right. Um, and every scene can be simplified to shapes, almost every scene. If it cannot be simplified into shapes, it should be just one wash and, and easy anyway, right? So, and of course you can have gradual transitions, which make things a lot harder, which is why I recommend sharp contrasts. Uh, now, one more thing to have in mind is the size of your paper. This is a small size, which makes it easier, but also harder to include a lot of details, makes your margin of error large, uh, smaller, so that if you make a small uh, in inaccuracy, it's gonna show, uh, like a bit of a larger painting, uh, but it's more manageable, right? If you try to tackle this on a A4 or A3 size, A3 is larger than A4, right? Um, you're gonna have a hard time. So I would 
uh, be careful. Now I'm doing a bit of wet and wet here. This is where I kind of messed up. So right, I should have continued with this dark value all the way to the bottom left corner, but I kind of stopped because um, I wanted to capture the darkest middle where the wave kind of goes, where the tip of the wave is. Um, and I should have stretched this thing all the way to the left corner, something I'm, I'm gonna pay for later, but I'll just cover it up, it's okay. Now, one thing to note in the reference photo, this is where the green blue is the deepest and it's one of the most saturated parts of the painting actually so you want to give it its um respect <laughs> that's the best way of saying it so you notice i mixed a pretty strong green uh the camera doesn't show just how saturated it is it's a little sat more saturated than shows uh, but i'm gonna show you a scan in the end and you'll get it now i love how these two parts of the painting balance on the left you have a bit of wet, wet and wet a bit more flow but on the right there is still flow in some organization, but it's a lot of individual brush marks um, showing that kind of dark shadow. Uh, it's not a shadow, sorry, it's a reflection uh, on the right side. Now, to the left, I'm not going to touch that because that part is starting to dry. So you have to be very careful and aware of that kind of a thing. Uh, I noticed I took a look at the paper. I saw where the light is reflected and where I can still work. Now, I'm going to mix again. You got to give this strong saturated paint the respect it deserved. So I'm using a relatively clean mix of phthalo blue and lemon yellow and trying to capture that bottom left corner that I kind of missed in the previous wash, right? Because all of this needs to be darker. And that's where a part of the scene will feel detached, like it doesn't exist. That's usually when it's too light. And when a part of a scene annoys you and feels like it's stuck and it's too prominent, usually it's too dark. It's one of those things I learned to recognize by instinct, right? A lot of this is hard to teach. Uh, it's almost like make your own mistakes learn your own lessons in a way. Uh, but I'm trying to give you the best that I can in terms of my experience. Now I'm coming back with a bit of a damp brush because I want to uh, blend that slightly uh, darker value that I just added. Um, and I'm going to be very careful there. And so I'm including a few ripples, uh, getting uh, this edge of the uh, wave. I don't know what's going on with my MacBook. My my touch bar is going crazy. It's going really like maybe there's water on it. I'll have to clean it in a second. Uh, but yeah, sorry for that distraction. I'm actually going to do it now. I don't know. That was freaky, so I turned it off <laughs> for now. Uh, but in any case, yeah. So now I'm building that curve part of the wave where it breaks and crashes. One of the most, one of the more beautiful parts because this is the area that leads you to the strongest contrast. So you have this uh, nice little green with a dark, sharp tip to the right that you're gonna see in a few seconds, and then immediately, boom, that foam, okay? You wanna make sure you get that right as well. There's, this scene is actually very complex, right? It's not necessarily easy, but I want to show you, even when you tackle a very complex scene, there's actually a lot you can do to make it easier, but also fix mistakes, you know? You see me missing an area, so I go back and I uh, add to it or I may lift later on. I'll add opaque paint to bring back highlights. You can do so much with watercolor. Um, I think a part of the beauty, I'm going to go on a bit of a tangent there and I'm, I'm just following the abstract shapes in the water. Um, the beautiful part about it is if you can harness the natural movement of the paint as it's wet and then include a bit of control to it, that's the best case scenario. So if I were able to get all this wave to the left in one go, but then separate the rest of the uh, the rest of the layers and have a bit more organization there. It's a great achievement. So sometimes when you look at a scene, you want to think to yourself, where's the smooth transition? Where's the flow that watercolor can really shine by showing, right? And if you can manage that, you'll end up with a very dynamic scene that that really works with the paint. Okay. Uh, very often, and I went through this stage where my paintings were beautiful but so lacking grace and that happens to me to this day very consistently they just don't have that flow or that that w graceful element of watercolor but it still looks good so you could compare it to an oil or an acrylic where you paint it in, in individual brush marks now i'm going to tilt the paper because i want this to fall diagonally and it right now i went fast through it uh, but there was a drying time and now i'm going to bring back the foam nothing much to that technique i'm using designer's gouache and i'm just dipping the brush directly into the tube uh, sometimes squeezing it a bit to help the paint move up but that's basically it i'm using just the paint okay because i want this to be 
almost paper white. I don't need to dilute it with water. I don't need anything. I'm using it out of the, straight out of the tube. But again, that magic of watercolor, if you can harness its natural movement and work with its natural flow in some areas, you'll be forgiven for the more rigid other areas, if that makes sense. So that's one of the things I like to do. I, I actually feel like in this painting I wasn't as successful in that, but in many others I am. Now foam, I'm just painting where that highlight is. And actually not everything is white there. You see, I'm gonna paint around those other marks I put earlier, that's, that's fine. You do want to leave some gaps and it's okay if you don't have perfect cover now of, the, of all of this area. But one cool thing you'll notice is this still doesn't have much movement, but once I'll put the splashes on, which happens soon, you'll see in just a few seconds, I'm gonna start uh, dotting all of the water splashing, that's when it's gonna be really pretty. You'll see a lot of the movement comes from that splash. Um, and I highly uh, recommend you stay tuned for that because it's gonna be, it's gonna look nice. It's gonna look much more dynamic. So if you're looking at your painting and you're asking yourself, why doesn't it look good? It's okay to take a break, well, breathe, it's all fine. And take a look, you know, give it some time, it's okay. If you trust your instincts and you practice consistently, you will eventually recognize what doesn't feel right and you'll be able to correct it. Now, sometimes you'll recognize what doesn't feel right, but you don't know how to correct it, that's fine. Sometimes your taste in art improves, but your skills don't catch up, that's fine. I've gone through this cycle many times where I start to really dislike my paintings. Look at this beautiful splash there. I start to really dislike my paintings and it's just that my taste improved, so it's okay, give it some time. Uh, now, I'm putting in a bit more. That's actually white mixed with a bit of phthalo blue. So it's a little bit bluer actually. Uh, now I'm gonna start putting those darker, like the next dark layer. And this is where you wanna pay attention. This is where you create that contrast with the white that we just added, right? So that makes this a very interesting point of contrast. Now this green is, is still quite saturated. I know again, it looks a little muted. It's actually quite nice. Um, and this is, so this is kind of the thing I should have taken a decision earlier and gone, okay, I'm gonna first paint the bright side of the wave or the whole thing bright and only then add the entire shadow. And I kind of tried doing the, the two together and that's what really screwed me over. So that's a separation I missed and I should have gone through. Yeah, just just um, kind of my own rambling from my experience of painting this, but yeah. You know, some people comment that once they actually paint a lot, a lot of my um, insights and lessons actually make more sense and that's how it works you know the more you paint the more of this will make sense to you because you've experienced it you've gone through it like actual training boot camp uh, and, and watercolor really does have a tendency to humble you now one more thing I want to mention here if this looks like you know too overworked too many brush marks details remember what I told you bring a water sprayer and you just give it a spray and usually that will break off the stiffness, okay? Now, I'm doing this many times throughout my paintings, but one thing to note is if you're creating a pool next to a nearly dry paint, you're gonna run into trouble in a lot of cauliflowers. So be cognizant of that. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much where we're getting just to the fine tuning, to the smaller details of the painting. We're nearly done with the process. Um, so I'm just gonna uh, cre create that connection, right? With the ripples up front. Um, I did want to, to add that middle kind of layer uh, to there. I know it looks quite dark, but it's gonna dry much lighter. It's actually quite diluted. Uh, just to show that there's something interesting going on there, I'm actually coming back with some water to ease it again, just to kind of help the paint spread out a bit and not to be too rigid. Uh, but yeah, well, that's pretty much, we're almost done. I just sprayed some on that opaque paint. And I immediately flip it so that it's uh, horizontal rather than vertical, because that's a part of a ripple, right? And you're gonna see it dry now. Now, this is a cool part, because you'll notice some of these ripples have a bit of blue in them. So once again, I'm doing that whole bit with the uh, phthalo blue uh, with my white paint. Remember, you can use your designer's gouache, mix it with watercolor out of the tube. So take a bit of phthalo blue, even from the pen, Mix it on the palette with a bit of opaque paint and you'll push it towards the blue. And that's a great way to bring back 
very tough highlights that have some color in them that there's no way you'd be able to paint around unless you're like super skilled and I don't know how people do that. Now I'm adding a few touches of yellow here. Uh, just notice that the back, I kind of missed that. A bit of orange would have gone uh, better there, but that's okay. Uh, it just helped me add a bit more richness to the background. Even though I don't really know exactly what I'm painting, I'm painting uh, lighter reflections basically. And it's okay if you don't know exactly what it is, but I felt like a bit of that was missing there. Uh, and if you look at the overall color scheme of the painting, it really helps to bring some color to it, uh, which I find really nice. Now look at how much more uh, of these dots um, I, I add here, it's just, I need it a lot to make it feel splashy and make it feel beautiful and, and like dynamic, you know, and all of that. And once you see the scanned work that I'm going to show you in just a few seconds, you will be able to tell like it made a big, big difference. Um, and, and these colors are actually really nice looking. So I'm going to sign this and I'm going to show you the final result. Right now there's no tape to remove, obviously. And as I'm showing you the final result, look at the colors of the green. It shows much better here. And I do want to thank you so, so much for watching. And I do want to encourage you to check out my watercolor courses. All the links are going to be in the description box below. And I will use this opportunity to thank all of my supporters on Patreon. You allow me to produce these, these tons of free videos for as many people as I can to watch um, and I'm super grateful for that. So with that we'll wrap it up and I will see you in the next vid. Take care.